Good afternoon, and welcome to today's panel from Vision to Reality, Diverse Strategies to Improve Utilization and Engagement. My name is Katriana Coleman, and I am the Client Service Director for the South. During today's session, our presenters from Advent Health Celebration and Medical University of South Carolina, or more commonly known as MUSC, will share their experiences on innovative patient engagement strategies. This session will cover a vital part of implementing health information systems within the healthcare setting targeting how to effectively introduce a new technology and keep staff engaged. Healthcare is quite literally a 24-7 setting, which poses large challenges in how to adopt technologies and appropriately carve out the time to educate and engage with staff for success. We'll hear from our panel participants today about the plans they established respectively for training and educating, creating go-live support models, and even how they re-engage once the dust has settled from any new initiative. After hearing from our presenters, I will open the floor to ask you all questions and share your experiences with your own innovative patient engagement strategies. With your participation, this session will provide a great opportunity to exchange ideas and best practices. It is my pleasure to begin this afternoon's presentation by introducing our presenters. Deb Lon is a Director of Professional Development and Clinical Excellence at Advent Health Celebration. With over 30 years of healthcare service both at the bedside as a cardiovascular critical care nurse and various administrative roles. Deb focuses on the clinical leadership education across Advent celebration as well as process improvement and strategic planning to nursing to improve clinical outcomes. Welcome Deb. Michelle Parks is a senior, pro pardon me, uh, we also had one other participant that was not able to make it, Nadine Hugis, and Deb will probably touch a little bit more on that but just, just know that uh, we're missing her today. Michelle Parks is a senior project manager at MUSC. Michelle joined MUSC almost three years ago and was immediately assigned to implement patient engagement technologies and was heavily tasked with the Room of the Future project being implemented at Sean Jenkins, the new Women and Children's Tower. Needless to say, Michelle's project management profession professional certification proved imperative in the countless projects associated with adopting new technologies at MUSC. Michelle's involvement in planning every step of the way has been necessary to keep the projects tracking forward. Welcome, Michelle. Mary Riddle is the manager of the eHealth team at MUSC. Mary's team oversees and supports multiple technologies and applications to include GetWell Network. Mary has been at MUSC since 1997 and has supported the health system in various roles critical to the system's successes. Most recently, within the information technology space, Mary has been a vital has been vital in the re-engagement of GetWell Network and how to appropriately manage the evolution of the system and engaging staff as needed. Welcome, Mary. Before we get started, I need to share a disclosure statement with you related to the nursing education credits that are being offered for this session. The Maryland Nurses Association is an accredited approver of continuing nursing education by the American Nurses Credential Center Commission of Accreditation. If you wish to receive credit for attending this activity, you must complete the session survey found on your conference mobile app. In the survey, it is important that you check the box indicating that you would like to receive credit and enter your full name and email address in the space provided. Your certificate will be sent to that address. In compliance with the continuing education activity credit conflict of interest disclosure requirements, we'd like to announce that the presenters of this session have no commercial association that would create a conflict of interest. Deb will kick off our session today. Thank you and welcome all. Good afternoon. Are we ready? So just a little bit about um, Advent Health Celebration. I thought there was a picture of it. 260 beds, gonna be 350 beds, faith-based organization, part of a large um, system, Advent Health. Uh, we went through a brand change about a year ago and uh, we're adjusting to our new name. Uh, we have hospitals that go from Michigan to Texas um, and many of them are in Florida, which is where I am, Central Florida. Uh, we see a great number of um, tourists. Uh, we've also got a very specialty service line, bariatric, spine, um, opened our um, open heart surgery this summer, also a pediatric ER. Um, just a lovely place. And, um, you know, those unique patients that are traveling 
um, here to see Mickey Mouse for a once in a lifetime event and end up in the hospital have special needs. Um, so recognizing that makes our team of nurses um, very important. We have 650 nurses, about 3,000 employees, um, several hundred, 300 doctors, I believe. And our mission statement is to extend the healing ministry of Christ. So um, that guides us through everything that we do. So my role in this presentation is to help my um, IPC coordinator, Nadine Hugas, with uh, barriers and challenges to stay focused on what the organization uh, needs, how the work of Get Well, which we've had since 2009, actually complements our other strategies uh, and initiatives. And there are several things that come to mind when we were um, planning this talk. Since we've been live since 2009, we'd kind of outgrown our equipment. Lots of older equipment. We ended up having to um, replace, get rid of black boxes and go to smart TVs. Once we did it, it was an amazing difference. Um, and, you know, I don't know about y'all, but as a nurse, if it breaks once, oh, it's broken all the time. They don't remember the 24 times it worked right. They only remember the one that it broke. So it really was a huge barrier from the staff engagement perspective. And, um, you know, nurses are also very clever. If it breaks and somebody shows us how they fixed it, oh, we're on to it. We fix it every time it breaks. Um, and that means unplugging wires. Um, we are like doctors ourselves. We try to fix things. All of those are barriers if the equipment is not working correctly. And again, thanks to our um, technical side of Get Well and our IT team, we've worked to have a seamless process that when a TV has a problem, exactly what happens, our engineering team is contacted. Um, they do the initial troubleshooting, decide what needs to happen from that end. If it's a Get Well issue, then we contact them. If it's a, a TV issue, then our engineering department replaces the TV. Um, the switch to the um, LG smart TVs was amazing improvement. Um, faster speed um, just made life much easier, and we are almost through with the entire campus doing that. Um, but again, it had been years since we'd done that kind of an upgrade. The other thing that um, we find, and you heard this throughout the conference the last couple of days, sometimes the patients are resistant because they'd rather watch TV. I really appreciated Luann's um, new equipment and new approach to show that maybe by moving where the uh, trigger for the videos pops up to the side, that patients will perceive that as less of a distraction. I wanted to watch my ball game or TV. Um, what our strategy is around that is if you can find that one thing with that patient that really is meaningful, um, they're much more likely to watch the TV. Our staff are expected to show at least one video every day um, and complete it. So they have to order one, nights usually orders, days actually plays it, and we find that works really well. Keeps them from being overburdened. Uh, patients can manage that amount of information and gives the um, team time to interact with the patient. Other things with patient engagement are the technology, just the operations. We've done several things. We have a new welcome video that's much more intentional about our initiatives at the campus. Also how um, a kind of a cheat sheet on how to operate um, the TVs and the various uh, tools that are available to them. And that's very helpful and the nurse is responsible for initiating that. The um, other big barrier, and I think the team right before us actually taught, uh, captured this, was the competing nursing workload. If this is um, beyond a task, if you can relate it to the nurse, how this really helps that patient go home, 
feeling ready for their discharge, recognizing how it's measured, if they can integrate it into their workflow, whether that be hourly visits or any other initiative, there's much more likely to be success. We've had some great um, strategies with engaging the nursing team, and I'll share those in just a little bit. Our um, interactive patient care coordinator is uh, a jack of all trades. She's a cheerleader, um, she's a problem solver, she's a designer of content, um, she just is there whenever folks need her and tracking of all issues so that that kind of critical link is very important in our campus. So this is just a little bit about some of the unique tools we've used to engage the patient. Uh, we have a NICU that's about two years old and the NICU team, small but mighty, small but mighty patients, has just been amazing in connecting with them to design content that's unique to their population. Uh, we're very good at that, and we have great partnerships with people that help us do voiceover so that we can make sure we've got that content. And when the content is um, something that the nurse feels is important, you not only engage the patient, you engage the nurse. So it made it a, a twofer. Um, we also have um, challenges, and I'm sure you all do too, about keeping the content current with the um, procedural changes, the medication changes, technology, length of stay being shorter. We have to really work to figure out um, what that content looks like. And folks today don't want to see an older video. If it doesn't have young, bright colors and the right looking people in it, they don't want to watch it. And our staff give us feedback about that as well. So we've become quite clever at doing voiceover and our own um, programs. They're all about three minutes long, but that's been really good. Last night at the awards, you heard about the Get Well uh, grant, the foundation grant. The document on the right is a whole person care activity book. We have uh, found that when we connect our patients in other ways to our mission and vision and what's important to them, they're, they're just more willing to watch the education. So this book is about um, 15 pages. We received a $500 grant to develop the book, and one of our interns from the University of Central Florida actually designed the content. We have a tool called CREATION. Each letter stands for a different acronym that's a part of how you live a healthier life. Choice, rest, exercise, activity, trust, interpersonal relationships, outlook, and nutrition. How about that? <laughs> Woo! Um, but inside the book are crossword puzzles, search and finds, all kinds of things like that. We also have a CREATION coloring book and we give the patient a little uh, pad of six pencils and a creation coloring book for our joint and orthopedic patients. And that has just been amazing. We have people coloring from all over the United States, men, women, it doesn't matter. But engaging the patient can come in a variety of shapes. The book itself is about creation, about how you make healthy life choices. So there's more to it than just a book. But thank you for the Get Well um, Foundation grant. Um, that was actually a wonderful bonus for us. So engaging the staff, this gets a little more creative. And Nadine's always ready to do a party. Um, and she loves the holidays. So um, I would tell you that competitions and parties aren't sustaining for long periods of time but they sure do create a lot of fun and energy while they're in progress. At Easter, we had an Easter um, help get well bunny find his missing eggs, and there was a golden egg that people were in tough competition for. We had them everywhere, um, and one unit managed to increase their utilization by 15% in one month just with that competition. So once you do one, you can't stop. You have to do another one. Um, we also have uh, the one from Christmas was really nice. We all dressed in outfits. I believe I was the Christmas tree. Um, but we all participate, and we visit the units, and they either got stones, 
uh, like coal, or they got a prize. And everybody wanted their picture made with Santa Claus and the, um, who's the Grinch. Oh, they like the Grinch. But, you know, if you hear me, the point here is that while that's fun, it also connects people in an engaging way. Work is hard. Um, so if we can make work fun, then people are much more likely to do it. And I think that's been one of our big successes. And we have various parties. So we might have pizza party. Uh, we've had ice cream parties. Um, everybody loves food. So again, that's been really uh, powerful. And it's a lot of fun. And Nadine is creative to the nth degree. And she always comes up with another um, fun game for us to do. Now, we don't just do it for fun, because if you don't show the Get Well videos and you don't engage the patient in the services that are online, then it really isn't worth maybe what it costs. So here's some examples of units that we've seen um, significantly successful. One of the units um, did their improvement by having the health unit coordinator and PCT. They lead the charge. They run the... Um, utilization um, discharge report every day, the readiness. And so they walk around and make sure every nurse knows to do their videos for that day. Um, it takes a village. It isn't one person who makes this work. It is the energy and the belief that what you are doing is living our mission that makes it so important. And I know that I see that in their faces. Leadership, extremely important. I did a leader visit the other day and watched a uh, brand new assistant nurse manager do her leader visit. And without taking a deep breath, she incorporated the video. She made sure that it was a part of her touch points while she was in there. And I could have told who her manager was because I know her leader. It was so smooth and so fluid. The patient was so involved. He says, oh, I've already watched my video. Um, so again, that engagement is very um, important. So um, to kind of keep this going, our goal at the campus is to have better than 70% utilization. And again, as you heard from some other people, it isn't a one-step process. It's not just parties. It's not just equipment. You have to have an ongoing plan to sustain things. Our orientation for new graduates, we have a simulation lab where we can take the folks into the simulation lab and actually let them have hands-on. Rounding um, by the interactive patient care coordinator, and we also have interns who help us, our volunteers, um, has been amazing because they go in the room, get people connected. We've had interns show as many as 23 videos in, a, in one um, like four hour shift. So they're out there making it happen. And then uh, keeping the contest going, always looking for something new is so important. Um, get well and interactive patient care is a journey. It's not a destination. It is about continually evolving, looking to see what we can do to connect our patients with tools that will help them take better care of their self because we're not going home with them. So very important that you do that. And um, we're delighted with the uh, product and so grateful to be here and be able to showcase that with you. So I'm gonna turn it over to MUSC. Good afternoon. I'm Michelle Parks, and I'm here with my colleague Mary Riddle. And we're we don't have a great shtick like Mike Riddle. Yeah. <laughs> I should have worked on that. I know we should have. <laughs> oh well. Um, so we're going to talk about what we've done at Medical University of South Carolina. You've heard about some of the things that we've worked on with a lot of the people I see out here in the audience. Um, it's been a great, great experience. So we are happy to share it with you today. So. Um, let me get to the right slide. So MUSC is headquartered in Charleston, South Carolina, and um, we're the only, South Carolina's only comprehensive academic health science center. We have a 700-bed medical center that includes a nationally recognized children's hospital that we just opened on February 22nd. <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> 
Um, we also have a um, Hollings Cancer Center, Level 1 Trauma Center, Institute of Psychiatry, and more than 100 outreach locations across the state. Um, so about, I don't know how many years ago, before my time, um, leadership started to talk about building a new children's hospital in Charleston. The one that we had um, was outdated, and we had an opportunity to build a new facility. And while they were having those conversations, at the time, we had Gatwell Networks PLC-based solution just in our adult inpatient um, hospital. That was about 400 beds, but we didn't really have a patient engagement strategy in our children's hospital. And as I mentioned, that physical space was really outdated and could not support the new technology that we wanted to implement. So um, they started to you know, have conversations about how do we take advantage of this new state-of-the-art facility that we're building so that we can show, we can implement technology that matches the state-of-the-art care that we're currently offering. And our CTO and Gettle Network CTO, and along with a lot of very smart people, um, again, some of them are in this room, started to have conversations about what, what new technologies that can we implement in this children's hospital that are really going to make a difference and engage our patients and our families in a whole new way. Um, so a plan began to emerge. We were actually here um, at Gowell Network's headquarters a couple years ago, and a bunch of us were in a room, and we started brainstorming and, and putting on paper what things we were going to implement. And we'll talk about what things we've implemented in just a minute. But as those conversations were happening, I, I, Catriona mentioned I'm a project manager, and I started thinking, wow, this is really cool. And then I started thinking, oh my goodness, how are we going to implement all these things in two years? Um, so I, my brain started going, and luckily, um, on the other side of the fence, we um, were assigned Leah Hackman, who's been an amazing partner with us. Um, and together, Leah and I started trying to put together a plan to get us from this beautiful vision and make it a reality. So within MUSC, we started to put some structure in place. Uh, we leveraged our informaticists so that they could d document what our workflows were going to be, and we made sure we got sign-off from senior leadership so that we were all on the same page about what we were implementing. We also implemented a new architect role, so that role was intended to look at our infrastructure and make sure that this new technology that we were implementing could work, so we needed to have the right Wi-Fi in place, and I mean, all kinds of things that I don't even understand, <laughs> but security, there was a lot of focus on security. Everyone's concerned about that now with new technology, so we wanted to make sure that we had the right security in place. Um, we also partnered with our care team. I mean, we need to get feedback from them, so we made sure that they were engaged and that we partnered um, them with business analysts and developed a requirements traceability matrix to dig even further into how, what requirements we had for each of those deliverables. Um, Get Well provided us a scope document, again, to make sure that they were on the same page with us on what we were working on, and then we developed a schedule to make sure that we were going to meet our timeline. So I'm going to go through a few of the deliverables, and then Mary's going to take over from me. So I think all of you have seen Signal. We've talked about it in various sessions, but these are the iPads outside of the room. Um, they display the patient's first name, sorry, first initial and last name, um, their room number, and then various alerts. So if they have isolation precautions, that'll display on the sign, and then you can press that precaution or that alert, and it'll open up instructions on the PPE that you need to um, have for inter before you enter the room. We also implemented digital whiteboard and care board. So the care board um, is at the bottom of the screen and can be persistent. You can toggle that on and off, but it's intended to be more persistent than the whiteboard, which you have to navigate to. And we display information about the patient being a fall risk and um, goals and their care team. And then you can dig further into the details when you go into the whiteboard. We did also put the technology in place for RTLS, which was mentioned um, at the product roadmap session. We did not end up implementing that at, as of this point. Um, there's a lot of policies and procedures you want to make sure you put in place because your staff will have a lot of questions about how that data is being used and when they're being tracked and so forth. So that is a work in progress and probably will be an optimization effort later down the road. 
We put patient iPads in all of the patient rooms. So um, you can see there's a picture there of the iPad on an overbed table. Um, and then a closer up picture of the case that it's in. It um, is attached to an arm and the overbed table has a charging, charging solution so you can plug it into the wall to make sure the iPad stays charged. And then we have the mobile remote displaying here which Mike talked about earlier today that allows the patient to control the TV so we don't have to have keyboards in the room which from our past experience has, have been um, a little problematic because they often end up in the drawer or they don't get paired correctly or you know those kinds of issues so the mobile, rep, mobile remote replaces the keyboards and allows the patient to control the TV from afar. I'm going to turn it over to Mary now. Thanks, mm -hmm. uh, so we also implemented the patient family video conferencing and within that we allow our um, providers to do virtual rounding so within Epic they can click a button and begin a virtual rounding session. Also we have a cast to TV, staff TV control so our clinicians can display clinical information to the patients in their room on their smart TV. We have a smart room so we can allow the patients to control their lighting um, from the bed, also their um, temperature in the room. So as we began to uh, do the work to produce the deliverables, a couple of things that we put in place that were really invaluable um, were, first of all, a mock room, both at Gatwell Network headquarters as well as at MUSC, so we could look at the technology and touch it and feel it as we were going through the process of the build. That was really critical. Um, communication in any project is important, and this was no exception. Um, we had a lot of weekly meetings, a lot of team meetings that um, Michelle facilitated expertly. Um, I can't give enough credit to the team that put this together. There was just so much work that went behind the scenes and um, just really professionally handled on both sides. Um, the PMO provided monthly updates to operations. Um, MUSC and Getwell Network conducted demos as um, needed and required. And we did a lot of work um, in the testing space. So from our end and from Gatwell Network's end, just the importance of testing things over and over and over again and going through the workflows and making sure that things were displaying as we intended and making those changes before we got to a production environment. Um, and, and so the product, once delivered, looked like we wanted it to look and, and, and the patients could appreciate that. Another um, facet of our maturing of this project was the engagement with our interactive patient engagement coordinator who is not here, but she again is a champion, a cheerleader, and we are so fortunate that she was pivotal in this process um, overseeing things. Put together multiple day in the life sessions so that the new staff as they were being hired and the existing staff that would be transitioned from the current children's hospital to the new one could come into the room and touch and feel the technology and get a sense for what they were going to be able to play with once they were on site. Um, a lot of training efforts between the patient engagement coordinator as well as our nursing professional development group. They were highly involved. Um, and then just again on-site opportunities for our technical staff to come in and understand the integrations and the work that needed to be done. So um, with any project there are always hiccups along the way and one of ours was um, we had a, a hurricane that delayed some of our construction and then we had some continued delays. So we were quite a few months behind in our opening and you know, sometimes momentum is important, and that's, this was no exception. So kind of keeping the momentum of the education and the excitement of the new technology and how it was going to be used was um, a challenge. Understanding the implications to the network and how those um, would have to be addressed, and just the overall complexity of multiple vendors, um, multiple integrations, and getting everybody kind of going in the same way at the same time um, and contracting those kind of things. I think one of the things that Michelle and I discussed that we felt was really important um, was identifying resilient resources. So again, in a, in a large project like this, things have to change rapidly and people need to be able to pivot and identifying the resources that can manage that in a positive way was important and valuable for our success. So uh, some wins that we identified for, for our personal team, um, engagement from the top talent both at Gatwell, which we really appreciate, and from our operational partners and from IS, just again identifying the people who could get the job done and get it done well. Strong leadership from our chief nursing officer to drive this forward. 
um, the senior leadership of the Women and Children's Department and IS senior leadership backing this and providing the resources to get the work done. Um, and then finally, our PFAC, our Patient and Family Advisory Council, they were instrumental in guiding what was going to be useful for our patients and our families to see. And the fruit of all the labor is this beautiful children's hospital. Um, it, Linda Robinson was on site with us for the go live, and I want to give another shout out for Getwell for providing the resources for our go live. That was so incredible to have you guys on site to help us out um, and enjoy the view, the sunrises and the sunsets. We're a really beautiful location. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Joe from uh, Southern California. Um, I wanted to ask a question from uh, our first presenter. I'm so sorry I didn't catch your name. Um, Debbie. Debbie. Um, you showed some slides on utilization, and it looked pretty high, around 70%. I was wondering, what does that represent? Does that represent like completion of one video or completion of all assigned education or something else? We measure based on how many are ordered. Mm -hmm. So we don't want them to order 25. We use order sets. Um, and those order sets, you know, we try to streamline them so that they're not um, so many. But it is the completion of the ones that are ordered. Is it okay? Oh, so that that seventy percent represents seventy percent of all ordered videos are completed. Yes. Uh, okay. I wanted to ask also about the volunteers. Um, are they? The, the volunteers that are helping, you know, folks uh, with Get Well, are they like unit dedicated volunteers? Is there a structure to their rounding or how does that work? These are interns, mm -hmm. so they're onboarded as volunteers. Uh, we have three universities in the area. We require that they spend at least 150 hours with us so that we have them long enough to train them. So the first couple of weeks, they're always with somebody, but eventually, we're able to just let them go, have a unit of their own. They round on patients. They do not go in um, PPE rooms um, where they would have to wear a mask or any of those because they're not all health care. They might be health administration, psychology majors have worked really well. Uh, we've had some pre-nursing students do well. Uh, right now we're doing a partnership with one of our technical institutes and we actually have interns there from their health administration, their medical assistant um, program, also their um, engineering and plumbing. So we are bringing different kinds of interns, but the ones that have been very helpful are psychology, health administration, pre-nursing, and they're there for 150 hours. Texas A&M actually brings students there for a summer program for 250 hours. So we are able to use them for a good while, and it looks really good on their resume. Cool, thank you. Um, I want to ask another question about that. Maybe I missed the presentation on the that door display. Uh, that looks pretty cool. Are there any HIPAA concerns with that? If you've got like someone's name and like a Truvada allergy or something on there, I'm wondering. Yeah, so we did work with our compliance team, and um, there was a question about names. So our organization agreed to do first initial last name. I think that that would be something each organization needs to evaluate with your compliance team. Um, and we, we don't display every single piece of information about the patient on the sign. We went through an evaluation process and picked out things that we thought would make the most sense that weren't as sensitive pieces to, to display. Makes sense. Thanks. Thank you for sharing all the awesome work you're doing. Uh, as someone on the Get Well team who was not able to be there when you all went live, I'm just curious to hear what the reaction was from patients and family with this type of setup. Sorry, can you, you, you say someone from GetWell was not on site? Uh, just as someone on the GetWell team who was not on oh, site, oh, oh, I'd oh. love to hear what the patient family reactions were to, to the work you put in place. I think they were really receptive to it. Um, the folks that we had from GetWell that went and rounded um, on the units to just check and see how things were going were really helpful to get people started, and I think the reception was really positive. 
And I'll add, um, I went on some rounding with the team and um, uh, we went into a room, I think I was with Anket, I don't remember, I think maybe Chris was there, and we met a mom who has f five kids and she was there with one of them and so we taught her how to video conference with the rest of her family and she was so excited and um, we had another, Dr. McSwain, who was mentioned earlier today, was doing uh, virtual rounding through the, the video conferencing solution and uh, he he was so excited and, and the patients were, Linda was in the room when that happened. It, it was just a really amazing moment that that brought it all together and really emphasized, you know, why we do what we do. So I, I feel like the reception was overall very positive. For the video conferencing, um, is the audio coming through the pillow speaker? I'm assuming. The, sorry, I didn't the catch audio. the. Sorry, the audio for the video conferencing. No, um, it, it it comes from the camera. Uh, again, great presentation. Um, I heard a couple of interests and roles as you went through an interactive patient coordinator or interactive patient care coordinator mm -hmm. and a patient engagement, I think it was uh, maybe coordinator analyst or something. Were those um, team members part of the team already and just redefine their role and goals and function because of that? Because you, you sometimes find your legacy IT teams that need to transform a bit in the roles and the functions and the goals that they play. So Can you kind of explain, uh, talk through about the evolution of those of those functions? Yeah, sure. And I, I will say that I probably use this two different terms for the same person. <laughs> um, you know, roles and titles change. So, um, but but to your point, prior to this project kicking off and GetWell Network finding a home within our IT structure there really wasn't anybody on the IT side that was owning it. So our patient engagement coordinator, interactive patient engagement coordinator, the same person, Cheryl Hamill, um, she was really driving everything related to GetWell Network and its integration inside of MUSC. Um, so I think she was thrilled when IT took some ownership of it and put a team around that so we were able to participate in the project. Um, so now, the current state, you know, we have an analyst, a couple of analysts that work on the integrations and the testing, those sort of things, and then we still have our patient engagement coordinator who is out on the front lines, rounding, using volunteer rounding, um, looking at content, working with our nurse educators and our educating, education um, coordinator to determine our content. Now, our um, interactive patient care coordinator has been a position for 10 years. Person has changed over time, and certainly their skills change as you replace them. She also is responsible for the patient advisory board. It has a connection to patient experience, but her primary role is content operations, collaboration with other key stakeholders, to make sure that the system is working and that we're meeting not only the patient's needs, but also the staff needs. So it's a vital role. Hi guys, great job. Thank you so much for sharing. I remember a couple of years ago when we were first getting together with you guys at MUSC, there was a list of um, supplier partners that were kind of, you guys were helping to gather. I remember that list was Apple and GetWell Network and Epic and Crestron and a couple others. And I remember our team heading down for the first meeting, thinking we're really gonna get pushed off to the side kind of in this whole process. And I guess, um, can you talk a little bit about your process of one, bringing suppliers together and the expectations that you actually set uh, on all of us to make sure we're collaborating on your guys' behalf? And then how'd you go about choosing who was gonna take lead versus who was? And like, how, how did that whole supplier, I guess, coordination and thing happen? Michelle is formidable. So <laughs> I'll let her speak to that. <laughs> I may not look it, but <laughs> I mean, I think, first of all, again, I mentioned Leah, but our, our coordination and partnership was key. And so there were times when she was coordinating calls with vendors or we were coordinating, but I feel like at, at the center, it was MUSC and GetWell Network. And then we always had people that from our, both our organizations that were on the calls if we had other vendors that were in, being engaged because you guys were integrating everything. So you were critical to 
to those conversations. Um, and we had a few challenges and, um, you know, with, it, it, I mean, that's one of the most complex things, the, the integration with Vidjo and Josh is sitting there and, and probably wanted to pull his hair out. Maybe that's where some of it went <laughs> on that project. <laughs> he doesn't have any. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. <laughs> Um, but anyway, you know, that, that's, those, are, those are critical um, relationships. And then now we're going to see as we go live, there's also that support that comes in when you have all of those vendors. And when something goes wrong, how do you make sure that you are getting the right person working to solve the problem? Um, I do think that we had a strong relationship already with Vigio because we have a strong telehealth department at MUSC, so that helped. But it was still very complex. Um, so does that answer the question? All right, any other questions? All right, thank you so much, ladies. Thank you. Thank you.